I'm Glenn Keane. Uh, I'm an animator. That's what I think of myself as an animator, even more an artist who animates. Uh, and I'm directing uh, in a way for allow me to animate something I love. I just did that with Duet, uh, working in conjunction with Google ATAP, a little interactive film where you can follow the animation, make choices, you put the camera in the hands of the viewer, and uh, it's hand-drawn. There's something wonderful about hand-drawn that I, I just uh, wanted to celebrate in that, that story. I had been at Disney for 38 years, and uh, but sometimes there's this bell goes off inside of you, and it's like this call to something, something new. And you don't know what it is. It's scary, but you gotta you gotta follow it. And I did, and I left Disney. And it's actually in the step of leaving that the other possibilities start to present themselves, but never before. It's like you've got to you've got to actually take the scary step first. And uh, this project duet started to reveal itself through a dinner one night uh, with my friend John Cars, Doug Sweetland, and Rodrigo Blas and I. We had dinner down at Venice Beach just to talk and about what each, other, each was working on. And um, Doug Sweetland was telling me about this amazing animation that was on this device, but he, he said, I, I can't explain it. You, you've got to see it. Matter of fact, you might be really interested in this. So he got in touch with them. They called me up at Google ATAP, Regina Dugan, who's heading up this research division called ATAP, um, had developed this technology uh, with the GPS being able to follow in virtual reality uh, animation. And so I came up there and I looked at it. My first thought was, well, why am I interested in this tiny little screen when I've been working on big screens? And then I, as I watched some animation that Jan Pinkaba had done with Doug Sweetland, uh, I realized it wasn't a screen, it was a window into this infinite world and really potentially the biggest screen of all. Uh, Regina said, what would you do with this? And immediately I knew it was, it was like this opportunity to do, to do hand-drawn in a way that I had never seen it before, to celebrate line. I wanted to draw. Uh, and I kind of started developing in my mind a story of a couple characters that you could follow and a progression of them, but I wasn't sure uh, where this was gonna go. I said, well, well Regina, what is that you, that you want me to do? And she said, well, I just want you to do something that's beautiful and emotional. Okay, well, what's the catch? There's got to be a catch to that. And she said, no, there is no catch. This is, we want you to push yourself creatively, and that's going to push us technologically. And uh, I thought, well, okay, let's, let's give it a shot. So I went up to uh, Lake Arrowhead, where we have a house up in the mountains there. And I knew that... Uh, Google was gonna come down and take a look at uh, what I had to propose at the end of that month in May, a year ago, a good year ago. This was May, 2013. And, um, but I had other ideas too. I didn't know if that was gonna go or what. And, and I had been planning out all these uh, kind of arcs of the stories for different stories, including something for ATAP. And um, by the end of three weeks, I was totally lost. Like, what the heck am I doing? And everything I'm working on, it just feels so like s imposed story process to me. I was trying to do it the way I thought story is supposed to go. And by the end, I was dead in the water. Uh, and Jenny Rim, who 
at that point, I had worked with her before, and I was thinking maybe she would be the producer of this film, and I'd been talking with her. She said, she's always telling me, you should use your superpowers, which is just to draw. And I called my son Max and told him my frustration, and he said, well, Dad, it's been like, how long has it been since you just animated just for the fun of animating? Well, it's been 10 years? Insane. I mean, I had done little things, but he said, well, there's got to be like a volcano inside it. You just got to just draw, just have fun, of it. even if it's not for use for anything, just see what comes out. It's funny how you, somebody else tells you what you know inside, but you really need to hear it. I need to hear it from, from Jenny, from Max. So I started drawing and immediately it was like somebody just opened up this well in me and and the, animating this baby was was just, I knew that's what I wanted to do. Animating a baby crawling and standing and, and then I, I shot video of my granddaughter skipping and I, I studied that and, and I was thinking, oh wait, how do, how do I begin this, this, uh, this growth? I need, I need like a cell turning into a baby. And, and I remember, wait, like three years before I'd animated a baby floating. I remember just going home one night and and wanting to, to animate something in space and turning and dimension. And so I animated this baby floating in the air. And I remember my wife coming in, my studio, was, you know, she was going to bed and I'm still animating this. And she says, what are you doing? I said, I got this baby here, look. And I flipped it for her and she said, what'd you do that for? I said. I have no idea. But it was at that moment I realized up at Arrowhead, this is the beginning, I've got it. Let's, we'll put that there. And Max and Jenny came up and within like uh, three days, we'd actually come up with about 50 seconds to show. Uh, and it, uh, ATAP loved that Regina Dugan said, well, let's do this. And, uh, and then we were off and running. I think people take it for granted. Uh, they think they understand, they think they know what hand-drawn animation is. And you go, oh yeah, yeah, no, that's right, I think I know that, yeah, yeah. Like, but I'm thinking, no, I don't think you do. I don't think most people know how it feels when you animate. Uh, and I'm in my office and I turn off the lights and I just have one light on my desk and and as I start to draw, um, I, don't, I don't have a picture in my head. Um, some animators do, I don't. Uh, it's more like I start to draw and, and the emotion, the feeling is there. I have a sense of what it is that I want. But it's a very real moment of performance. It's a performance art at that moment that's happening on the paper. Like, as I said, the, the lines are like a seismograph of my soul and it's happening there. And it, it never gets better than that moment on my desk. Uh, when it's put up on the screen and it's painted and everything else, it's never as good as that moment that I experienced right then. Um, but you have to keep the original line. And the magic in this was was when, and what was so wonderful was to have Max, who grew up with me, or you know his whole life, he he's understood that about my drawing, and um, he, I'd been doing some animation and he took it. He was working right next to me. We were up at Arrowhead, and he said, um, "What? Take a look at this. What do you think?" And I looked over and he had taken the line off the paper and floated it in space, turned it into light, and put atmosphere around it. And it was just like presenting the line. Even for me, I had taken it for granted. And he, he was just celebrating line. I was like, oh, that's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. This, I mean, he's, he's, he became the production designer of, of the show because of that, that insight, the valuing, I think, of what other people pass by and don't quite notice. For me, anytime technology has crossed my path, it 
it forces me to be a better artist. I've never been afraid of technology. It's like it, I think it's because it makes the surface of the screen go away and it opens up a dimensional world. And I mean, that's what I've always wanted. When I draw, uh, there's a certain frustration in drawing because I want to actually feel the form. I want to put my hands around and touch it. When I animate, I shaved the, the characters and Beauty and the Beast and Little Mermaid. I'm, I'm, I'm putting shading in. People would say, why are you doing that? Well, what do you mean? They said, well, none of that shading is going to be up there on the screen. You're wasting your time. I said, well, no, I'm not wasting my time because it's, it's more real and uh, I don't care if it's... I, it, like I said, it never gets better than that. And so the dimension and the sculptural drawing quality is, is the way I see animation. And so this technology of an interactive dimensional world just kind of, it's like shooting lighter fluid on the fire of that kind of desire, just like, whoa, okay, now I'm actually in a space and the characters are moving and turning and you could go anywhere you want with them. Even if a character comes up close, like Mia is pirouetting and if she comes up close, well now you've got this device that can do this so you can be looking at her hands going away or her face front on or down at her feet, but it's all in the same drawing. You're drawing three point perspective. Like, when would I ever get a chance to do that kind of a thing? It, it really opened up the joy of drawing and sculptural drawing. I mean, I really believe if Rodin was alive today and I could invite him into my studio, uh, he would want to do something to really break the bounds of where we are with, with animation. I mean, I see where technology is racing ahead. Uh, listening to Alvy Ray Smith talk about Moore's curve, where it, everything is increasing in the next 25 years, it's gonna be a thousand times more uh, powerful, the computing ability than it, it is right now. Um, and it, that's, it's already hundreds of thousand times more than it was back when it started. But, and so as we're racing down that path, I find myself as an artist today in 2014, looking at my pencil and asking myself, why can't I let go of this? <laughs> what is it about that? I mean, I see thousands of years before artists expressing themselves with this tool. And are we going to just say, that, that time's over now, we don't need that anymore. Like, no, there's gotta be something there's something, there's a direct connection in the drawing. It's like there's, it just directly flows from my heart through my, my hand. But on the other hand, I don't wanna uh, let the train go on without me. I wanna be on that train. I want, I want that to be actually pulling something out of me that I could never do without that kind of Moore's curve that's growing. So I'm, I'm really hanging on to that even though I don't understand it. I mean, I just, talking to Alvy Ray Smith yesterday, I, he said, you know, even though I know it's going to increase a thousand fold, I will be totally surprised as if like, what? I never expected that, even though I'm intellectually expecting it, I will be surprised by what it can do. And I think that it's, I, I'm moving forward on this with, with a trust that there's something's going to happen, something's coming, I just don't know what it is.